Hey everyone, my name's Justin from JusticeGood.com and I'm here with Nathaniel from Tupvid.com. Yes, and we're gonna create some sweet text effects today. Five different ways you can quickly create some creative and easy to create text effects in Photoshop. So I'm gonna show you guys three ways, but first Nathaniel is gonna show you guys two cool ways and we'll go from there. Yeah, so let's get me out of the way. I'm gonna show you how to create this Walking Dead style text effect. It's not exactly the same, but it's pretty similar. In fact, it can't be exactly the same because this is The Walking Heads, which is a totally different show than The Walking Dead. So what I've done here, I'm gonna shut off that original group. I'm gonna turn on this text layer. It's not a text layer though. I created this text and then I right clicked on the text layer and choose to convert it to a shape. And then I got this, it's just a vector shape. I can change the color. We're gonna roll with white. And I also have this texture here that I downloaded from Lost and Taken. Lost and Taken is a great free texture site, especially if you want like concrete and stone style textures. We've got this texture. The first thing we're gonna do is we are going to add a clipping mask. So we're gonna clip this texture to the shape layer beneath it, which is of course our text. I'm gonna do that by holding down the Alt or Option key and hovering between the layers. And then that little icon appears. And when we click it, boom, we get our clipping mask. Now that we have the clipping mask, we need to go ahead and start applying color effects and really deepening and darkening this color. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a levels adjustment layer, just like this and I'm gonna clip the levels adjustment layer just like we did with the texture. So we're only affecting the texture, not our background, which is already sufficiently dark. We're gonna darken uh, our walking heads text just a little bit. I'm also gonna add a little bit of red to it. Uh, and I just, to do that, by the way, I just went to the red channel. I'm gonna grab this mid-tone slider and I'm gonna pull it uh, back to the left just a little bit. We're gonna go down to the green channel and I want to increase the green, so I'm gonna pour some green into there. You wanna be careful with this because you really start to get an electric green pretty quick. I'm gonna to go to the blue channel, and in the blue channel, I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow. So now we have a pretty yellow version of the Walking Heads text, which of course has that concrete texture applied to it. We need to now dark, both darken this and also kind of knock out some of the vibrance and saturation. We're gonna do that by using a channel mixer adjustment layer. Again, hold down Alter Option to clip that adjustment layer to the layer beneath it. We're gonna tick on monochrome here. I'm gonna set the blend mode to multiply. And what I need to do is just reduce the opacity of this channel mixer uh, layer a decent amount. Right there to about 45, 46% looks great. Um, at this point, what we wanna do is add additional texture to the top of our walking heads text. Because right now, sure, we have our, our initial texture, but we want even more texture. So we're gonna go here and create a new layer to add a new blank layer. And then we're gonna go fill, or edit fill, excuse me and choose to fill with contents of 50% gray. I'm gonna then go filter, noise, add noise, and we're gonna add about 100% noise. It's important here that you choose uniform distribution and even more important that you choose monochromatic for this little checkbox. That just ensures we're not gonna have all kinds of mingling of color. Hit okay. We're gonna set the blend mode here to soft light. You could go overlay. I'm gonna roll with soft light in this case. Now you can see we've added a ton of texture, but it's not really a realistic looking, realistic looking stone texture. What we need to do is go filter, stylize, and choose emboss. And now here within emboss, it's pretty simple. You can choose the angle wherever you want the light to be coming from. A height of three with an amount of 100% is a beautiful little gravelly stone texture that you're going to get. So hit okay. And of course, we wanna clip this to our, uh, our stack of layers. But if we zoom out, it does look pretty cool just applied as a texture over the whole thing. Um, but just for the sake of keeping this thing moving along, we're gonna clip it just like we have before. Now the last step is just gonna be burning this in a little bit with uh, some brushes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create yet another new layer and we're again going to fill this with 50% gray, edit fill, contents 50% gray, set this to a blend mode, in this case of overlay, we want this to be pretty intense, clip it to the layer beneath. So, and actually I'm gonna rename this DNB from layer four just so we know that like this is our texture. And this layer up here is gonna be our dodge and burn. Let's try that again, but spelled correctly, there we go. All right, so dodge and burn, and I'm gonna grab the burn tool. We don't really need the dodge tool in this case, we're just gonna burn. I'm gonna right click, and from the cog wheel here, I'm gonna to choose to replace brushes. Now what I want are either watercolor brushes or grungy distressed brushes. I think I'll try going with these watercolor brushes to begin with. Uh, because watercolor brushes are super, uh, super useful all over the place and they can really give you great effects. So burning here, I've got my exposure set to about 50% will probably be good. And I can just begin burning in uh, the sides uh, just like this. So let me just make sure I'm not right clicking. There we go. I'm gonna size my brush down a little bit. We're just gonna kind of burn in the edges. We wanna keep the, the center pretty bright and we can go in also and get even more 
uh, burning on our edges either by duplicating this dodge and burn layer um, or one of the things that I'm going to do is like come in here with this kind of like running paint effect and give it some kind of like you know grunge dripping it's kind of a neat little effect to give it just kind of tears things up a little bit in fact I think I will just hit command or control J to duplicate that layer and then hold down my alt or option key and mesh or excuse me clip that so it's all meshed together with the layers beneath it and what I can do at this point is just reduce the overall opacity of that layer something like that and at this point I can go in right click and just choose like a standard basic brush so go to basic brushes I'll hit OK to replace those brushes. Grab like a really big brush, maybe make it even bigger. Maybe make it something like 7, 800. Well, not 3,200. Let's just punch in 800 here. Great. It's very soft edged. And we're just going to paint a couple times just to kind of darken up the edges. Maybe darken up a little bit here in the middle as well. That's always cool. And But we still definitely obviously want the center of this text to look much more bright than the edges. Now, one absolute last thing that you could do is go ahead and merge this, merge all this stuff to a new layer. Control Shift Alt, that'd be Command Shift Option and the letter E. So we have this up at the top and we can go filter. This is a very destructive uh, way of doing this, by the way. Filter, render, and we can choose lighting effects just like this. And you can see here, this gives us kind of this really cool um, way to just play with kind of the, the way the light is working in our image. So I'm going to move this over. I'm going to drag this and pull it up just so we have you know, some more intense brightness there in the center. Maybe make it something kind of like that and then hit OK. And of course, what we would have to do is mask this or clip this to everything underneath because we only want to get what we've done to the walking heads text. And then at this point, just reduce the opacity of that overall uh, lighting layer. So you can see relatively quickly, we can create a pretty cool walking dead style grungy text effect. So that's that one. Let's move over to this other style of type. And this is like a very whimsy, watercolored, floral uh, way of, or effect, I should say. Um, so what we've done is I've just gone and created uh, a one, another, another text layer, which again, I've right clicked and gone ahead and converted it to a shape layer. And this is just a very serifed font. I think it's called Playfair. And I also believe that it's a free font. And I've, I filled it with the color black and I set the opacity of that layer to 10. Now what we want to do so we can just kind of play with these, uh, all these watercolors is create a new layer and then load our original text layer as a selection. Or actually we could, well, let's, yeah, let's just load it as a selection because you'll see what we're going to do here. I'm going to load that as a selection and I'm going to apply this as a mask to this new watercolor layer. In fact, I'll name this layer watercolor. All right, and then I'm going to choose the new mask icon and it applies it as a mask. Make sure you select the original layer. Go ahead and grab the brush tool. I'm going to right click and I'm going to load. Well, actually, I'm going to replace brushes and therefore I'm going to load in. Uh, let's go with these watercolor brushes here. Well, these are kind of cool. I'm going to double click to open up my swatches panel and I'm going to begin with a very bright, vibrant pink. Now, part of the important thing about using these watercolor brushes, well, first of all, we want to size it down just a little bit. Maybe again, about 550 pixels. That'll be good. We want the opacity to be relatively low, something like 20, 30 percent. That way, when we click once, if we click another time, it's going to sort of double up that paint effect just where we clicked with our brush initially. So I'll just go in and add some pink. Uh, let's add some sort of yellow. Maybe that'll be cool. All right, double down with that. It's actually more of like a spring green, isn't it? I'll right click here. I'll choose a different uh, brush. I'll size that brush down a little bit. All right, maybe I'll go with maybe one of these more pink color. Oh, we already did a pink. What am I thinking? Let's go with an orange here. Orange and pinks always mix kind of cool. Uh, and they just look really neat together. All right, cool. And you're just sort of building up this effect as you go. In fact, we can right click and we can choose. And I'm going to choose to load brushes because this will just append my new watercolor brushes to the end of this. I'm going to choose to load another set of watercolor brushes. Uh, here we go. I'll go with this one. I'll drag back on the size of that brush. Great. Uh, let's go. Let's go with a light blue here. Let's add some blue up near the top of this. All right, that's kind of cool. Maybe bring it down toward the center. Nice. And you can see how it's all just flowing together very beautifully. That's happening because our opacity is very low, and the nature of these watercolor brushes is to be somewhat transparent. Let's add some green here as well, just because green never hurt anyone. All right, great. So we're really mixing all this stuff up. I'm going to come back with. Uh, a little bit more pink down here at the bottom just to really kick that off a little, maybe even up here at the top. 
and up there as well. So we've created sort of this floral text effect. One of the things we can do is just shut off the original text layer and see what it looks like. That looks pretty cool. But in addition to this, you can get some splatter brushes or just your watercolor brushes, like a really big one, like this one here, and maybe set it to a more like 1600 instead of 2500, just based on the size of our document. And you can see how it's gonna give us like this big watercolor pattern. Paint with the color white, and make sure you've selected the layer mask for your watercolor layer and click maybe once or twice. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna sort of just give you this nice swoosh of all of the additional watercolor splatter because see everything we created that's being masked away. But we can sort of reveal some of that by just clicking once or twice with that, uh, that larger watercolor brush. So you can see very, very quickly and very easily you can create this really cool watercolor text effect and by using a layer mask, you can then go in and even add additional splatter to what would be the canvas on which you're painting. So, Justin, over to you, man. All right, Nate, so I don't watch The Walking Dead, but I might if the text effects are that cool. So hopefully <laughs> you guys still have a little bit more energy to go because I have three more quick ones for you. The first one we're gonna do is a quick 3D pop art style text effect with a long shadow. So I've got this document open right now and we're just gonna go ahead and grab the text tool and choose whatever font you want. I found that it works well with blocky fonts. So I'm gonna use this one called Freshman Normal and we'll go ahead and write out the phrase that we want. So I'll write mine out and then we'll position this wherever we like in the center until Photoshop locks it into place. Now we're gonna hold the keys Option and Command on the Mac and if we hold those and press on our arrow key, it's gonna duplicate and move our layer at the same time in one step in any direction we're going. So if I want a diagonal shadow, I can just alternate between up and right until I have the length of shadow that I want. So as you can see here, I'm gonna make about 50 copies for a relatively short shadow. Now what you wanna do is hold shift and grab your second selection and hold shift and go all the way down to your first one and we're just going to merge them together with command E or you can right click and merge them. And at this point, we're going to fix the colors so that we create a nice pop effect. So I'm gonna make my original word white and then I'll keep the shadow black and then I'll place it against a nice pastel background. So I'll go to layer, new fill layer, solid color and we'll just use a nice pastel green here and I think that leaves a nice contrast so you can edit all the colors to your liking but that's the quick 3d pop art style text effect next I'm going to show you guys how to create an eroded grungy type of text effect so grab your text I'm just going to keep using freshman normal for the rest of mine but you can pick whatever font you want and I'll go ahead and write out my word this time and I'll set it to black since we're working on a white background. Now what you wanna do is right click on your text layer and, no. Now what you wanna do is go to layer, layer mask, reveal all. And you'll see that this will create a layer mask for us to start chipping away at some of our text. So we're gonna grab the paintbrush tool and if you actually go to the cog wheel here and press reset brushes, you'll get Photoshop's default set of brushes. And at the bottom here, you'll find a lot of different textured and chalky type of brushes. So I like using this one, Rough Round Bristle, but you could play around and find one of your own and just make it large enough for the canvas size that you're working on, but not so large that you start to lose quality. A quick tip is you can use the bracket keys on your keyboard to, to increase and decrease size quickly. And with your layer mask selected, you wanna start painting black on areas that we're gonna chip away. Now, I'm not really gonna click and drag because that's gonna take out too much of the letter, but if you just click a couple times in place in spots, you'll see that you can start eating away at some of the letters and it'll start looking like it's dusted off or eroded off. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish the rest of my letters here and I'll catch up with you guys when I do. All right, so you can work on this as long as you want and mix up different brushes to get the effect that you like, but you should have an eroded look at this point. And one final step we can do to add a little bit more realism is on a new layer, so layer, new layer, 
we're going to use the same brush to paint some parts of it outside, almost as if it was shattering or dusting off or exploding. So I'm going to lower my brush size this time. And on this new layer, I'm just going to click the same way we were around some of the edges of the layer. So this is going to create that look as if some of the pieces of the text are dusted off or coming off of the letters. All right, so this one's all in the details and the patience that you take creating the effect, but that's the basic technique to create that dusted and eroded look. So for the third text effect, I'm gonna show you guys how to quickly slice your text in half and make it look like it's about to slide off. So let's go ahead and type out a word just like we were. Same font and everything. You guys can use your own fonts if you like. And I'll position this in the center so we can work. And what we're going to do so we're not super destructive and rasterizing it is we're just going to duplicate this layer one time and we're going to create some layer masks. So this time, go ahead and grab your polygonal lasso tool and we're going to create a slice right through the middle. So I like to go diagonally, kind of like it's cut by a sword or something. And we'll create a slice through the text and then close our selection. And we're going to use the reveal selection and layer mask to create the slice. So with one of the text layers, so the top one here, I'll go to layer, layer mask, reveal selection, and that'll hide the rest of the letters. So you can see if I hide it, I only have the top half. And now I can actually reselect this selection, the same exact one, by holding command on my keyboard and clicking on that layer mask and it'll bring up my selection again. And this time I want to click my other layer and go to layer, layer mask, hide selection. So now we have two separate parts of the image and now all that's left to do is move one a little bit off kilter to the other. So I like using my keyboard just to get a clean move by pixels and you could see it now looks like the text was sliced in half, but we still have the full word if we remove the layer mask or if we want to change things. All right, so hopefully you guys found at least one or two text effects that you could try out on your own between me, mine and Nate's. If you guys want to check out the last video we did, you can actually find it over on Nate's channel. So youtube.com slash tutvid. If you're not subscribed, definitely do so. And make sure you subscribe to both of us because we're going to be doing one video on my channel and one video on his channel. So two videos per month. So thanks so much for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.